About 40 years ago, I was sitting here in my office at SMU, and in walked a young man with a book under his arm, Solid State Circuit Design. He had come to study with the two authors of that book. They were long gone. I didn't have anybody that I thought he could study with. After talking to him for a few minutes, I said, you're going to study electronic design automation. You'll be my student. And he was. About three months later, we discovered that Texas Instruments had a warehouse full of unsold personal computers in Lubbock, Texas. These computers were just like Apple IIs, only the difference was people bought Apple IIs. <laughs> We went to TI and we said, if you donate us some of those computers, we'll do something educationally spectacular with it. We decided that we would program all of the homework assignments in my introductory circuits course. Art gathered a team of undergraduates and made what might be called the first engineering workstation, two years ahead of anybody who did it commercially. You could enter the schematic laboriously and it would solve the circuit. And he was very proud of the fact that if you put too much current through a resistor, a little puff of smoke would go up. <laughs> a couple of years after that, I was working for General Electric, and I had to coordinate all of its electronic design automation. I was running ragged, and they said, as General Electric said in that day, you need to hire the best person in the world to help you. I said, well, the best person in the world is my grad student who's just finishing back at SMU. They scoffed. They said, your grad student, the best person in the world? Well, we flew Art into corporate headquarters in Fairfield, Connecticut. They interviewed him, and before he got the plane on the way back, they called me and said, you're right, he's the best person in the world. Quick, once Art was there, we came up with an idea for digital circuit synthesis. It wasn't a good idea, it was just an idea. Art took that, and again with a team of undergraduates, get the theme, he should have been a professor, teams of undergraduates. He evolved that into a great idea for the Socrates digital synthesis tool. That couldn't find a home in GE, so with their blessing, he spun that and some other tools out and founded Synopsys. Synopsys is the most successful electronic design automation company in the history of electronic design automation. Uh, art doesn't remember all this the way I do, so we're going to give you a little Rashomon here tonight, but I also give you art. Well, thank you, Ron, and thank you, faculty, for de delivering such a great crop of amazing students. And of course, I really want to congratulate you, all 537 greatly deserving graduates, and the three that were somewhat lucky, you know who you are. <laughs> it's a bit surreal to be here after 40 years and now have 15 minutes to sort of share with you everything I've learned in life since then. And so looking at the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you, of course, know that the answer to life, the universe, and everything is 42, not 48, 42, two digits. My answer, two words, yes, if. Yes, if is mental magic. Say it in a really tough situation, and you can watch yourself change. Now, yes, if has an arch enemy, no, because. Yes, if opens doors. No because shuts them. Yes, if creates energy, no because zaps it away. The struggle is actually quite real. But say yes if when facing a problem, a challenge, or an opportunity, and you will find the path to courage, the will to collaboration, and the heart to care. Why does yes if require courage? Because the yes commits us to try without even knowing how to deal with the ifs. Yes, I can graduate from SMU engineering if I make it through organic chemistry. Some of you actually did. Does it come easily? Absolutely not. I look in the mirror and I ask, Art, so how often are you yes if? What percentage of you is no because? It is so humbling. 
How often have I said, no, we've tried that before. Nah, it will never work. Forget it, it's just too hard. I should be a founding member of Attitudes Anonymous. Hi, I'm Art. I'm a no-becauser. Sure, it takes an initial spark of courage to say yes if, but once you commit, it gives you courage. I learned that lesson in my first job at, after SMU. As you heard from Ron, I went to General Electric and built an electronic design automation team, and we invented this breakthrough called synthesis. Instead of weeks of painful manual design, our software automatically created circuits in minutes, and they were smaller and faster. This could change digital design forever. But then G decided to close the site. We're going to be laid off. Laid off! Now what? Now what? With two guys in my team, Bill Krieger and Dave Gregory, we came up with this crazy idea. What if? What if we formed our own company, a synthesis company? A thousand questions. I still remember sitting under this big oak tree and discussing and debating, yes, we got to do this. Immediately followed by, no, because what if they don't give us the technology? But what if we made it worth their while? But what if we cannot find investors? What if we get G to put some money in? And on and on, back and around, no end to it. But deep down, my no because, I knew what it was, the reluctance to take risk and the fear of failure. I was afraid. And then I saw the light. I remembered all the books I read as an adolescent. Herman Hesse, Carl Gustav Jung, Jack Kerouac. They all told me the same. If you cannot make this leap, take this risk, you will never dare do anything meaningful. The French writer André Gide said it best. You will never cross the ocean until you have the courage to lose sight of the shore. For me, for me in that precise moment, what if turned into yes if. Sure, the if part was still pretty iffy, but the yes brought the courage to at least try. Somehow I managed to get a 45-minute interview with Ed Hood, the vice chair, second in command of General Electric. This guy was like 26 layers above my pay grade. And somehow I convinced him to give us the right to the technology, invest $400,000 in return for a share in the new company. Five years later, synopsis went public, and I wrote him a thank you note with a real cool $23 million return. <laughs> it's the thank you note that matters. It's the thank you note that matters. Courage to say yes brings courage to tackle the ifs. Now, I'll grant you, the if part can be pretty hairy. Invariably, it's a set of really difficult trade-off, tough decisions. But we are SMU engineers. We are trained to balance trade-offs. We're trained to beat the ifs into submission. It's not about finding the right answer, but finding the best answer. And it's way easier when we do it together. As powerful as yes if is, it becomes turbocharged if you change it to yes if we. Take a killer team of problem solvers. That will be you and align it behind a strong yes, and you will change the world. I'm so convinced of this that for five months now, I've been on a mission at Synopsys to embed yes if into our culture. It's not remedial. Synopsys is high vitality. For 32 years, we've led the state of the art of electronic design at a faster pace than anything in the history of mankind. And I can tell you, the spark of yes if in teams is positively infectious. By now, I've heard the same story at least 20 times. A team gets stuck in a no because pit, a difficult problem. People argue without listening. Some get really upset. Some want to just the heck out, get out of the room. 
And then as frustration mounts, someone sheepishly says, what if we try that stupid yes if thing? Silence, pregnant pause. Did she really just say that? She just called us a no becausers. A chuckle, a little bit of a laugh. Okay, let's try it. Tension is gone, the mood changes as the team realizes that there's going to be a solution and we're going to get it. Guess what? The first one to say it out loud just became an empowering leader. Rolling out YesIF to 14,000 people requires a campaign. Just before introducing it at our all-employee meeting, I decided to have huge YesIF posters. They should magically appear in the hallways, waiting to greet people as they come out of the meeting in 120 locations worldwide in one week. Not an easy deadline. Design, printing, shipping, getting those damn things on the wall, it seemed impossible. What a delicious moment of irony when we caught ourselves having a massive no-because debate about yes-if posters. <laughs> and then we made it happen. It's not just teams at work that benefit. Three weeks ago, I had a spike of max stress. It happens, but I was really, really on edge. Luckily, a fun break from work. I play lead guitar in a blues band. It's Saturday afternoon. That evening, we have a live gig. My friend Dave and I, the sound guy, were driving our band truck full of equipment to the venue. It just stopped. No power. Turns out, the engine compartment is filled with a mega rat's nest, literally. And those suckers have chewed through half of the cable. I can see the copper strands all touching. No way to make it to this gig. My panic meter sort of hits code red, and I feel this stream of four-letter words in multiple languages <laughs> make it to my brain. This is my worst no-because nightmare ever, except I'm awake and wearing pants. And then Dave just says, yes, if. What? Did he really just say that? Yeah, he says. We can make it if we get a rental and if everybody helps. Deep breath. And then we as if the heck out of the situation. We got a rental, turns out the last one on the lot, rerouted some band members, unloaded, reloaded everything in the new truck, zipped to the venue within the speed limit. No sound check, fresh shirt, tune the instruments, four minutes to go, and we played a great gig. Honestly, without Dave's yes if intervention, I would have given up. You know, for 30 years, I've built Synopsys together with a close partner, Chifun Chan. For the last decade or so, we have been co-CEOs. When I hear that no because and feel the sucking sound slowly pulling me down, his yes if instantaneously heals my mindset. Chifun is an amazing natural yes if person. I hope you have such a friend. What a gift. It's hard to overstate just how precious multiple perspectives are to successful teams. In a great soccer team, every player knows that they have two competing tasks. Play your position and be where the ball is. Winning teams win by embracing the unity of objective while leveraging the diversity of the skills. The gift of diversity in every human dimension, in every human dimension, is one of the great wonders of mankind. Given the road ahead for the ultimate we, team humanity, we'll need all the courage and collaboration we can get. The spread between terrific new technologies and daunting dangers has widened and needs action. 
It's an incredibly exciting future. Machine learning and AI are happening. Everything is becoming smart beyond anything we've ever seen. You will drive that change. But, but we also desperately need you to tackle the enormous challenges. Be it dealing with bioresistant diseases, cybersecurity, or the mother of all challenges, climate change, and the unconscionable destruction of our habitat. These challenges are completely global. They require global leadership, global alignment, and global action. Narrow-minded nationalistic retrenchment is not only morally questionable, it is scientifically nonsensical. I am so bullish on technology impacting the ifs of global warming. But without the commitment to the yes, we are those proverbial frogs in a pot set to boil, commenting on the water getting a bit toasty. You are not frogs. You are our next generation of great engineers. A leader is a leader is a leader. Be a leader in your family, your community, your company, and in the world. True leaders are not selfish. They believe that he or she who has the brains to criticize should have the heart to help. Intellect, empathy, and courage. Sound like a plan? If your heart says yes, then take a first small step on your yes-if journey. Someone in your past, a parent, spouse, advisor, classmate, someone had a yes-if belief in you. So sometime in the next three days, say thank you. Explain how their yes-if changed your life. Write a note, make a call, send a text, but say the words. Not only will you make them an inch taller, you will seed a powerful mental habit in yourself. In fact, I want to do that right now. Ron, thank you. You saw a yes spark in me and became my yes if mentor. You introduced me to all the pioneers in our field. It raised my aspirations to a level that I would have never found on my own. Learning from you and them, I now know why. You become who you surround yourself with. I had heard this before. There I was, a teenager at the Montreux Jazz Festival, July 5th, 1973. I had scored a ticket to a concert with Barney Kessel, one of the great first-generation electric guitar pioneers. At that time, the festival was still open seating, so I went early, really early, three to four hours early. Surprise! The doors to the building were open. I go in, and somewhere in the back, there's some cocktail party going on. I go a little closer and closer, and then I see him right there. Barney Kessel in front of me. I'm really shy. My high school English really sucks. But I sideways shuffle, you know, with that look uninterested face. But meanwhile, homing in like a heat sinking missile. Barney Kessel is talking to some people. But suddenly, we lock eyes. And before I realize it, I blurt out, Mr. Kessel, how do you practice to become better? I know exactly what he said, because 10 years ago, I found a scrapbook where I had written it down, word for word. It's easy, he says. Find some musicians better than you. Play with them and learn and learn until you're just as good. And then, find some musicians better than you and learn and learn until you're just as good. And then, he repeated a third time. 
Find somebody better than you and learn and learn until you're just as good. And then, when you cannot find anybody better, come back and teach me. Yes, if. Yes, if. One of the most powerful positive principles, period. Surround yourself with those who live it. And learn, and learn, and learn. And when you really get it, come back and teach me. Class of 2019, congratulations. Art, thank you very much for your wisdom and guidance today. So I have a, a question for the AV guys. Do you think we could see a little bit of Art's uh, guitar playing? Do I hear a yes if?